It filled hospitals and emptied the streets. It separated families and disrupted society on an unprecedented scale. When you face the extraordinary, you need to start with what you know. We knew a global pandemic of this scale was possible, if not inevitable. We knew that overstretched hospitals could be overwhelmed. And we knew that we had to be smart enough to anticipate unprecedented needs. That you cannot just pull a plan off the shelf to deal with a crisis like this. That when hypotheticals become realities, someone must be prepared to step up. And we knew from experience how to respond with certainty of execution when what if becomes now what? Crucial Staffing was founded on the idea that we would develop the technology, the capacity, the bandwidth, and the people to deploy large volumes of staff, both clinical and non-clinical, into emergency situations. So we started planning last February of 2019, and we opened June 10th of this year. We were off to the races. When we opened our doors within a few weeks, we had a border crisis. We staffed two hurricanes and then a, uh, another foster care project in Texas. We partner with a lot of different entities throughout the United States. Um, some of them are government organizations, other are, others are private partners, and um, they're calling upon us to help them get staff that they need to these crisis areas. There are probably companies that do aspects of what we do, but we put it all into one piece. Um, and I think that's what makes us so unique, is that we are the ones who are able to coordinate among different pieces and bring it all together. In this room today, we are activating nurse practitioners and physician assistants for a large deployment that we have going on right now in New York City. So New York City, I would say, is the epicenter right now of the COVID-19 crisis, and their hospitals are um, understaffed and overrun with patients, so we are providing support staff at those hospitals to relieve their employees and help take care of their patients. We were the first staffing agency to deploy to New York City at a time when it was the hot spot of not only the United States, but the world. So we, we started planning at the end of February of 2020, and we ended up deploying um, March 17th was our first day. So, you know, we came in full force. It, it took an army, we had little planning, but we were willing to take the plunge. So we were the primary provider for both the New York City Office of Emergency Management, as well as the New York City Health and Hospital System. So we were really the only ones to come in and, and take that leap and, and jump right into the, the hospital system. Our emergency operations center uh, expanded from about 20 people to over 100 in 10 days to manage the crisis in New York City, as well as Louisiana. Uh, we're managing both of those projects concurrently. Um, and the emergency staff is spread across different operations, logistics, HR, payroll, customer service, all different facets of uh, the project that make it happen. It is extremely fast paced. So we have about 40 individuals that are taking phone calls today. Um, but with that said, the lines are ringing busy. Some people can't even get through. Um, we have hundreds of people that are calling us at a given time. One thing that is unique to the emergency management life cycle is that you, know, you come in for the response. Well, now we're seeing that we are part of the recovery as well. You know, we've only been here for a month and we've watched the tolls drop. We've been watching more beds open up because our staff is within the hospitals. So not only did we come here for the response, but we are planning to be here to see that life cycle through and through. We wanna be here for the recovery. We wanna be here when they're demobilizing staff because there's not a need for agency anymore. And that's, that's something that's super special to our team and a driving force for the team. We haven't had to do a ton of recruiting. Our staff have been recruiting for us. Um, we do post frequently on our social media pages, um, especially Facebook and Instagram. Um, our followers on those two sites have quadrupled in the last two weeks. So we really just post and say, hey, call this number, phone lines are open, and the phones start ringing off the hook. The team that has come together for New York City, it ranges from you know our physician assistants, nurse practitioners, nurses, RTs, CNAs, MAs. I mean, it is, it's unmatched. We have a pool of personnel from across the nation that all came together to support a city that may not be their home state, you know? So it really shows 
the dedication and the passion that healthcare providers have. And then the IMT staff, well, I mean, we all have our own backgrounds. Um, so I mean, we're all just a melting pot of individuals, but we're all here for the same reason. So the thing about Crucial that I've really appreciated, they are um, very informative. They reach out to us through text messages, through emails. So they have done things to tell us like, hey, you know, we know you guys are working really hard. If you get sick, we have a nursing staff that's available to you. Told us like, hey, you know, guys, if, you, if, you, if there's anything you need in regards to PPE, just reach out to us, you know, and we're going to, you know, manage that and take care of that for you guys. So they are always concerned about our concerns and our welfare. From the heart of the country to the eye of the storm, crucial healthcare professionals risk their lives to save others. These heroes on the front lines are driven by many things, but all share a sense of duty and all are supported 24 seven by crucial staffing. Because if healthcare workers aren't taken care of, the rest of the response collapses. One of our uh, crucial crew corporate employees is a nurse as well, like me, I'm a registered nurse myself. Um, and uh, Krista has done an unbelievable job putting in an employee health program to keep everybody safe. Uh, hyper sanitation, daily temperature checks, daily fit for duty forms, trying to keep people spread out. So taking care of our people is uh, just as important. First conversation I had with them, um, they were just very upfront and made it very clear that the nurse was the priority as far as that's they're taking care of us if we're taking care of the patient. So um, they open open lines for contact and Facebook messaging, texting. Then I even got you know personal uh, contact from Brian himself, which is the CEO, and feeling like you can talk to the CEO is like, I don't know, you feel special. <laughs> um, I, I think it'd be safe to say there's not a single nurse here from anywhere in the country um, that had any idea what they were going to see. So the, the shock in, you know, the number of days they're working, the hours they're working, the distances they're traveled to and from work, all of that are kind of normal stressors, but the, what they're seeing, the amount of patients, the amount of death, those things just add. Um, there was, in the beginning, we saw a huge, like a sense of futility. Um, this disease, when it goes from, you know, um, barely noticeable in a person to bad, um, it's drastic. One of the most unique things about the team in New York City is that they were the first people to respond to the COVID crisis. They came to the epicenter, you know, they had no reservations about being there on the front lines to help. You know, every person that I've talked to, they want to see this through the end. They want to say, I was a first responder in the COVID crisis. I was there to help. I was one of the first people to deploy. And, you know, I get goosebumps talking about it, but there was no hesitation there. We wanted to be there. We wanted to help. And you know that's that's what we did. I want to give you know um, props to to Brian, the CEO of Crucial. Um, we're not part of anything that's reimbursable. His company is paying out of pocket to get us here and to have us keep these nurses healthy. Unfortunately, the native New York nurses don't have that right now. Their, their chaplains have been pulled out of the hospital. Um, any ancillary staff has been pulled out. Emergency operations are often long, difficult, and require multiple layers of planning and logistics. But a crisis of this scale required an unprecedented level of commitment and expertise. Crucial has a tremendous amount of protocol, um, documents, pamphlets, things that we post everywhere and then we've had daily briefings. So I think because your systems are so solid and because we have somebody in charge of safety here that we've taken away a good portion of the uh, fear, nervousness, or uncertainty. I would work with Crucial again in a heartbeat. I think they're very organized, very professional. They're a good team to work with and you can tell by how smooth this has gone. Um, I mean, when you think about it, we're a hotel. We, know just about nothing about medical um, facilities and we've been able to accommodate and work with 900 nurses now going on almost four weeks. The boots on the ground for Crucial at our hotel are very, they're practically our staff now. I mean, they work hand in hand with us uh, in controlling all the nurses in the building under and respecting the rules of the hotel and they, they've been wonderful. The uh, New York City Fire Department pulled their fire trucks up to our hotel the other day, 
had the sirens going and got out and applauded our nurses that were staying at one of the hotels there. So that was heartwarming and emotional. I'm very proud of a fellow crucial people in my group who have stepped up. Usually, you don't rise to the expectations. You fall to the level of your preparation. But with good communication, good control, good support, uh, my team has done remarkable and incredible things. When we got the call that Prusha was looking for um, somebody to come in and help with the mental wellness of um, the healthcare workers that were going out on the front lines. And I think what impressed me most is, um, you know, they talked about the teams that they were sending out and the people they were sending out. And they said, uh, we need you guys to come. And I said, uh, why is it so important? And they said, because it's the right thing to do. So I just, um, from that moment on, I'm like, I'm sold. Um, Crucial has supported us being here in a mighty way, um, really taking care of every need um, so that we can support and care for their people here. Regardless of what type of crisis it is, everything that we do moves very quickly. So um, with a lot of nurses that are used to travel nursing, they have a defined start date, they have a defined end date, they have a couple of weeks to get themselves together before they start a job. But with emergency staffing and crisis response, oftentimes we don't have details for jobs until the day before we are notifying people about them. So, you know, everything moves very quickly as far as travel, starting your assignment, getting all the new hire paperwork, Oftentimes, this happens, you know, within two days of being notified about a position. You know, I really can't speak high enough of Crucial. I really feel like they have really our safety um, first and foremost. Um, they're always making sure that we have prop appropriate PPE and making sure that we have everything we need. They've sat up in our hotel. They've set up a little coffee maker and snacks have been brought in. Me. We're all a team here, and together, I really feel like. We have become a unit and I feel very much protected and heard and supported. I had someone reach out to me about a nurse that was supposed to get married. Um, she had to cancel her wedding like many during the COVID crisis. Put together a team and, and we threw a wedding um, in 72 hours in the heart of Times Square. We invited all of our clinical staff to be a part of it. We had the New York City Fire Department, the New York City Police Force, um, and it was a celebration in the midst of a really dark time. Alex Render from Crucial, thank you. Um, Perry Gay Cawthorn, thank you. For taking the time to not only reach out and make this happen, but for it to become what it has. Um, it's every girl's dream. It's not about um, anything but just helping. Like I know that sounds so cliche and so blah, like, oh, I'm here to help. But I'm here to help and I'm helping and it, it feels good to help and I don't want to leave yet because it's not done and they're not done and this evil disease isn't done and I want to keep going, I want to keep helping. I want to keep doing anything I can with whatever skill I have. This operation um, is beyond the, the pale of anything that we thought we would ever do. We, at the end of the day, see a patient in a bed and want to get that nurse in front of that patient. That's our drive every day. That's why we show up. And that's what really keeps us going. It's bigger than us. The COVID-19 pandemic put tremendous stress on healthcare systems around the world. We knew that our own healthcare system simply could not be fully prepared for what eventually came. You can take shelter from a tornado. You can seek refuge from a hurricane. But a disaster like this is different. It's invisible, but it hits like a bomb. Crucial healthcare professionals often left their families and their homes to walk into a mosaic of stress that is the front line of the pandemic. Others work behind the scenes to coordinate, support, and enable all ventured into the unknown, often with smiles and always with the conviction that when care is crucial, we are the ones that can be counted on to provide it. We don't see ourselves as heroes. We see ourselves as people doing what is necessary. We are crucial staffing. We answer the call.